Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And a number of my subscribers have aware of me that Jeff Nippard, aka Jeff Nipples, aka Above the Knee Rack Pool Jr., has uh, decided that he's going to start doing full body five days a week. So let me put on my plus five out of speech craft and let's talk about this. Now, to be fair, digging through that whole video looking for it isn't going to be worth your time because the cliff notes are that he talked with Dr. Eric Helms, who said that he's been doing full body, a full body split, which is not a split, uh, five days a week for his contest prep, and he just finds he gets the most volume that way, and then Jeff chimed in and said, yeah, I remember the stuff that Minnow did on that, and I haven't trained that way, but I think I'm going to do so now. And then he proceeded to do Eric's whole workout with him together. And that's the weird thing. It's like you almost got to ask, Jeff, are you even serious about your goals anymore? I've got to say you're not, and the reason I say that, you're doing everyone else's workouts, right? I could understand if you ran the same system of training as everyone else, and then you showed up on their day and do it. Like, for example, because uh, I, I do a conjugate-style uh, concurrent periodization. If I happen to walk into a gym with some other powerlifters who are doing a conjugate-style max effort bench day, I could work in and do their workout with them, right? We could do that. And then we would do maybe our own individual assistance work or whatever, right? You could do that because we're all on the same basic system of training and it would probably flow and work. But this is just random workouts and doing random workouts is not training. Unless it is plotted with progression over time and you have a, a plan in place to get stronger and improve and increase workload on the individual exercises and the individual muscles over a period of time, it's not training, it's just a workout. And that doesn't actually work. Right? You're, you're pretty much falling back to magazine bro shit if you're just showing up and doing random workouts that other people are doing. Um, so he, again, it's like, well, his progressive overloads for his channel, he'll make money off of it, but it's just for his actual progress and gains, it's just, just kind of stupid. Um, and in fact, he did, I mean, silly stuff already, like he ended up endorsing above the knee rack pulls doing this with, with Strap on Destiny, which Jeff, I'm going to dog you forever now. You're not pro above the knee rack pull. You need to be made fun of. You need to not be taken seriously and you are no longer evidence-based. That title should be taken away from you, right? You're not an evidence-based practitioner the moment you start promoting stuff like that, that all the actual real experts, even guys who you were on camera with in that video say is stupid. So, you know, they're basically calling you stupid. And uh, hopefully they address that with you in person. I hope they did. I hope Dr. Mike addressed that directly with you in person. That would be a good idea. If he didn't, Dr. Mike, I'm going to be disappointed that you didn't clown that dwarf. So, over to the point. Um, he discussed the full body five days a week, and they're saying, well, we think it's evidence-based. I don't know that it is evidence-based, and I'm not opposed to the style of training. I've used it. I've said, hey, it's perfectly reasonable. There were times I promoted it. Um, however, for me, when we start talking about doing five day a week full body, why would we generally do that? We're doing that for skill work, meaning uh, you want to get really good at squatting, heavy squatting heavy five days a week you know so up to a max it's actually really beneficial you want to get really good at hitting max effort benches you want to hit, get good at maxing on a bench press max every day you want to get it both do both every day that falls into full body that sort of stuff does work but when we talk about from a volume perspective um you know eric kind of broke down why well, seem to get more volume and and there's truth to that there's absolutely truth to that if you're talking about volume per set i i would actually agree with that let's say you're going to do uh, 10 sets of incline bench over the course of a week, and you're going to take them to within one rep of failure. All right, we're going to talk about reps in reserve. Now, if you're doing RPE 8, this is you're not going to get more volume doing this, because what I mean by volume, volume is going to be weight times sets times reps, right? You're going to be able to perform more on each individual set if you spaced it out. If you do like what you guys see me do oftentimes, five sets of incline Tuesday, five sets of incline on Friday. I could probably do a little more weight. I could probably go five pounds heavier for all 10 of those sets of five throughout the week if I did them two every day, Monday through Friday, right? If I did two a day, I could probably put a hair more weight on the bar. If I could do five or 10 more pounds, sure, that actually is going to be more total training volume for the week for doing sets of five on that exercise. So yeah, because you can use a little more weight or with the same weight, could you do more reps? In other words, could I take my five rep sets and could I maybe drag them out to six reps if I only had to do two of them each day? 
I could probably take my five rep weight and do sixes that I do five by five with. I could probably do that. So it would be more volume in that regard, but we get into the debate of um, does the accumulation of volume in a session matter? And this is, this is kind of the problem we get into is this big scientific debate of volume versus mechanical tension. Um, and here's, here's going to be my take on it. I think, generally speaking, up to a very low threshold volume is the primary driver of hypertrophy. That's what betas tended to show, up to a threshold, and then that declines rapidly, and then it can start to regress. Um, and once you get to that threshold, then tension becomes the primary driver. In other words, the mechanical tension and actual strength and amount of weight moving, how much, and what I mean weight moving, it's weight through a specific joint angle, not just how much weight you move through any means necessary. So how much tension is being placed on the muscle, which is a product of joint angle, um, how many other muscles you're bringing into play, um, and then weight on the bar. So we're talking about individual tension. Tension's an enormous factor. Tension's an enormous factor, obviously, in progressive overload. Um, people say, what do you mean? Well, you're probably going to get a better growth response doing 10 sets or 10 reps with 315 on the bench press than you are by doing 10 sets with 135. That's what I mean by tension matters. Like that, that absolutely matters. I'm not even telling you with tension that it's one rep. No, it's that for all your, your sets. In other words, whether you're doing sets of five, sets of 10, sets of one, generally moving more weight through a full range of motion is going to be more anabolic on any rep range, and you're going to be bigger as you get stronger. So, I mean, tension matters. Tension is, is a massive factor in hypertrophy, at least long-lasting hypertrophy, not necessarily metabolized, not transient storage factors, but we're talking about legitimate long-term muscle fiber thickness. Yeah, tension matters. So it, we get into a debate on that. Does the volume matter more there or not? Well, I guess it's going to depend on how much volume you're pushing a muscle to. And I, I don't know that the five-day frequency for most people is going to be ideal. I don't know that it is. We can argue it. There's data that goes both directions. There's real-world evidence that goes both directions. It's a point of contention. Do I think that for some people it could be ideal? Yeah. I, th I think there are some people out there who, due to their genetic predisposition and what goes on with their training, that they're, they could make optimal gains doing something like full body or hitting the same lifts even four or five days a week. Absolutely. They do exist. Um, for people who are more skill-oriented, let's say you want to get really, really good at doing a power claim, could doing it every day be beneficial? Yeah, I think so, particularly with heavy weight, because form work with lightweight doesn't matter, does it? There's a big one that people don't, don't always understand. Working at 60% of your one rep max doesn't improve your form on heavy weight. Unless you have really, really bad form and you can't do 60% with good form. If you can do 60% weight with good form, you get zero carryover with practicing it to anything heavy. It doesn't, doesn't do anything. It's completely useless because you already know how to do it with that light weight. And if you can do a single rep with that light weight already with perfect form, you're not going to benefit any further from practicing with that weight ever again. You're done. So uh, heavy weight is what you actually have to have to, to learn good form on an exercise because you, you have to take form till it breaks down if you want to improve it and practice it. You've got to get right below that threshold of where it's going to break down and practice that good form. So from a form perspective, uh, being able to do heavy weight very frequently matters. From, again, a hypertrophy perspective, I'm going to be reluctant based on what I've seen looking at the most elite athletes in the world at this point. I tend to think that most people can pull off a twice a week frequency on a, on a muscle group and still get maximum growth. That's the direction I've gone. I've, I've always said in the past, I think three is good, four for some people, five, six. The weight of the evidence is, is not that a lot of people can't do better on it. It's that pretty much everybody is capable let me state that again. Everybody is capable of stimulating maximal muscle growth and development all of twice a week. And doing it inside of four days. I don't mean like a, a six-day-a-week split with everything twice a week either. I've seen enough evidence of elite athletes and people all throughout the years that I honestly think that the overwhelming majority of people um, and most even genetically elite people can make maximum progress on a four-day-a-week program, hitting each muscle or uh, movement pattern twice a week.
that's just my uh, my observation of both the evidence and coaching and elite lifters all across the world over two decades. I've just come to that conclusion. Um, and I'm not saying other stuff can't work. And that's the point we come to. I'm not saying other stuff can't work. What I'm saying is statistically as an average, you being one of the people that it might work just as well for is probably not going to be that good. And that you could at least with what you do with what we know is fairly proven at this point with everyone from NFL players to elite power lifters to even even some bodybuilders who don't use copious amounts of drugs, a lot of natural bodybuilders. We know that that system of training and hybrid athletes, we know it can produce phenomenal results. We know it can produce world-class level results. It's proven. Um, so I would say when you go into stuff that's a little less proven, unless there's a reason to believe it has a clear advantage, and I don't think that it does, I don't know that I really think it's ideal to recommend it other than for specialized training for specific individuals. So that would be, be my response to the, the full body five days a week. At this point, if I were to base it upon my current viewpoints from a coaching perspective, from a lifting perspective, um, for me personally at this point, I'm probably going to stick with more or less that the template I just described. I'm going to tend to push a lot of clients and people are going to pay me for their results. And I don't want to experiment hard with them and see if they're the 15% of the population that might work better on something different when I know I can get them ideal results working in those confines and adjusting it. I'm probably not going to do so. Right? I'm not going to experiment with those people because I want them to get their money's worth. So that's, that's the situation that, that we're in with it. And that's just the reality of it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.